Welcome to Ask the Curator. Today we have a question that comes from one of our members who loves to walk around one of our most beautiful properties, the Mulford Farm, house built in the 1680s on just off Main Street in East Hampton. And in the window over the years, I have, as the curator, tend to sort of change the display. There's a small table there. And some time ago, I put this big picture in the window. She noticed there was something different. She looked closely at it and saw that it had a lot of decoration on it and thought it was political and wants to know a little bit about this picture. And this is probably one of our rarest pieces of ceramics that we have in our collection, which is, has quite a lot of material, and came to us in the 1920s, um, you know, very soon after the Historical Society was started. These are usually called Liverpool pitchers. Why? It's because it was made in the city of Liverpool. <clears throat> Historians today think that the Herculaneum pottery, uh, which was founded in the late 1700s in Liverpool, that they are in fact the people who manufactured these pitchers. They're very creamy looking, most of the early ones, the ones that are from the late 18th and early 19th century. It's a ceramic earthenware. It's, it's not fired at a high temperature. It chips, breaks very easily. It stains very easily. This one is pretty remarkable because it really doesn't have any staining on it at all, considering its age. And these, I think, are symbolic of something that's quite entertaining. <clears throat> You would imagine that all the Brits were horrified that the colonies had a battle with them and, and became free and independent, uh, losing really quite a lot of commercial uh, money for their government. But their potters were very smart. They knew that over here in what used to be the colonies, there were tons of people interested in buying ceramics. We didn't, were not doing a lot of table ceramic manufacturing after the Revolutionary War. So smart as they were, they started creating pieces of ceramic with decorations on them that were about America. And one of the ones that seems somewhat surprising to us, considering it was made just a few years after we, we won the war, is this one. Um, because it is a story that seems like something that the British wouldn't really be very happy about proclaiming. First of all, the picture is called Success to America. So there it is, Success to America. And on it is a phrase which I thought I could find on the internet in a minute, but I wasn't able to. And that is, by virtue and valor, we have freed our country, extended our commerce, and laid the foundations of a great empire. <laughs> of course, George Washington soon would proclaim that this was not an empire, but that's, that's neither here nor there. And speaking of George Washington, it has three pictures on it. One of George Washington with three symbols. Uh, one of the symbols happens to be for liberty. One of them is justice. And... Uh, in the very lower section is another symbol, uh, which is a lion. And that lion is there because it is a, it's a dead lion. It's been killed by America. So the lion, of course, is a, is a symbol of England. Now, this is not hand-painted. These are decorated in a process which was invented in England called transfer printing, uh, almost a, almost a see-through people piece of paper with ink on it, which can be put on a piece of ceramic, glazed, and then fired. Um, this thing is creamy colored because it has a cream colored lead glaze on it, which is the reason a lot of people call these creamware. Uh, pearl wares are, is another later invention, which was a blue glaze to make it whiter. The earlier pictures have this very lovely sort of yellowy warm tone to them. Now this shape originally was a shape made by British silversmiths. And our own Paul Revere in Boston 
um, I think the oldest one is 1880, started making these in silver here, and they were very, very popular with the, the patriots in uh, Boston. But these pitchers would not have been particularly inexpensive, and we find fragments of Liverpool pitchers all throughout Long Island when people do archaeological digs at, at 18th century uh, house sites with all different decorations, you know, but it's the political ones that are most collectible and most desirable. So Oberon Farber is our, the member who saw this in the window, and we're really happy, first of all, that someone is looking in the window, that's sort of fun, and would notice that this was something a little different. Now this has a picture of George Washington on it, and it's surrounded by 15 stars and 15 states which means that this design has to be after May 1st, 1795, because that's when Vermont and Kentucky were entered as the 14th and 15th state. And the Herculaneum pottery, as far as we can tell, um, was started in about 1796 and continued manufacturing until probably into about 1841. These were probably made in a four-year period from the start of the, of the company until probably, well, maybe, maybe five or six years until 1800. By that time, this is sort of old news. But this is a pretty groovy piece of ceramic. What did the English call these? They called them ale jugs. Because jug is the typical English word for a pitcher. And they come in all different sizes. This is not the largest. We have one in the collection that belonged to the Gardner family. It's probably four inches taller. And I know that a couple other museums out here have little cream jugs that are about six inches high in the same shape. And you can still buy things in this shape today, um, in, in mostly in uh, silver plate. So it's, it's an age-old popular pattern from you know, the 18th century. That's a lot of information on just one picture. But I just seem to think that this picture is deserving of all of our attention. Now, if you have something at home, if you've seen something in our collections uh, that you'd like to know about, I'd be happy to answer. Um, may have to do a little research on it, but I'd happily answer. So if you could contact us at info at East Hampton History, uh, Mary Ann, who is in charge of this Ask uh, the Curator program, will get the information to me, and you might be on the Internet. Thank you. See you later.